What is going on, everybody? Uh, I just want to welcome everybody to episode two. Uh, today is uh, Saturday, April 20th, and this is the Clean Bulk uh, series. I actually picked up my uh, morning coffee here, so I'm all good to go. Um, today, I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different than uh, you might be used to. Uh, I'm actually going to be giving you an educational style video. It's going to be giving you a nutritional overview of uh, macronutrients and how important they are. Uh, everybody kind of knows that uh, in order to get the results that you want, um, it's not just the training that you have to do. You have to put time in the kitchen. Uh, it's probably some people argue that it's even more important to make sure your nutrition is in check and I would agree with them because it's definitely the hardest part it's the hardest part to stay consistent with um, and if you don't have macro targets and you don't have goals to hit um, it can de definitely be hard not knowing uh, exactly what you're eating if you're not tracking your calories um, so yeah this video I'm going to give an overview of um, what macronutrients are um, and then I'm going to be giving an explanation of each one I'm also going to be uh, showing you guys how to calculate your macros, which is really, really useful. Um, so yeah, I want to walk you through that. Um, and today is actually the best day of the week. Uh, not only is it Saturday, um, but it's chest day. So I'm going to be uh, filming my workout as well. So I got a busy day for, uh, for YouTube today. Um, I'm hoping you guys are uh, li like the first episode. Um, I kind of ran you through my day. So like I said, this episode is going to be kind of a little bit different in terms of just more of an educational style video. All right, guys, so I'm just going to jump right into this. Um, yeah, so you you have two classifications of nutrients um, that you're really concerned about with uh, bodybuilding. Uh, the first one is a macronutrients. I'm pretty sure uh, most people might be familiar with them. Uh, but basically what they are is your nutrients required in large amounts that provide the energy needed to maintain body functions and carry out daily activities. Um, and these would include uh, your proteins, your fats, your carbs. Uh, so as I go through, I'm going to go through each uh, of the macronutrients and explain in detail um, a little bit about them. And then you've also got your uh, micronutrients, which are just required in smaller amounts. Um, they can't be produced by the body, um, so therefore you need to get them in your foods uh, or supplements. Um, and these are vitamins, minerals, essential amino acids, uh, essential fatty acids. Um, so I'm not going to go into greater detail uh, with this in this video. Uh, maybe I'll do a future video on it, but uh, the main focus here is going to be your macronutrients. All right, so the first macronutrient I'm going to cover uh, is protein, um, because I feel like it's the most uh, most important in terms of understanding what exactly uh, protein is, and just a little overview of protein, because um, I mean it definitely helps to understand uh, why you need protein and what, uh, what the makeup of protein is. Um, so basically protein is used by the body to build and repair and maintain muscle tissue. Um, the caloric value for protein, which basically means uh, how many calories are in one gram of protein. So in one gram of protein, there's four calories. Um, I'm going to walk you through an example later of, uh, like I, to, I'm going to show you an example based off me, uh, of how you would calculate your macronutrients and how you would figure out your protein. Um, but yeah, the recommended uh, intake for protein is, uh, it's kind of a guideline. It's anywhere from 0.8 to 2 grams of protein per pound of lean body weight. You can also do this not on lean body weight. And I'll, once again, I'll, when I do the example uh, of calculating my macros, I'll show you based off both. Um, but basically, it's just about how active you are. If you're really, really active, um, you want to maybe go a little bit higher on the protein if your goal is to build muscle. Um, and it actually helps with losing weight as well. So I'd recommend uh, a starting point of at least one gram of protein per lean body weight. Um, if you want to build muscle, maybe go a little bit higher. Uh, I'll probably go a little bit higher in, in my calculation, so that's up to you. Uh, in terms of supplementation, uh, you should never really use protein powder to supplement your main dietary food sources. Um, that's just kind of obvious. I mean, you don't want to be consuming protein powder all day. You want to be able to get your protein through your uh, chicken and your major sources of what you enjoy for uh, your meals, like if you have fish or chicken or any type of protein, you want to consume that uh, before you start supplementing. Um, and basically, it's a cost-effective, convenient way of hitting your protein targets. Um, it's it's very hard to hit. Like if you're trying to aim for 200 grams of protein, sometimes if you actually like track your protein, it, it can be hard to hit those goals. Um, so basically, supplementation is a way of being able to help you hit that 200 grams of protein per day, uh, and it's a good way to keep dietary fat low. Um, so if you went with an ISO uh, protein, you actually basically get nothing but just pure protein. Uh, whereas if you went with a whey, uh, the fats are pretty good on it. You just want to watch the carbs. Uh, you don't want too high of a carb uh, protein powder. So look for that when you're looking for protein. And make sure that there's at least uh, 25 grams of protein is what I would recommend for a protein powder. And uh, protein is also 
it's comprised of a various um, amino acids. Uh, these can be both essential and non-essential. And the difference really is that essential amino acids, uh, they can't be produced by your body, therefore you must get them in your diet. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the overview of protein. Uh, next I'll jump into carbs. So yeah, carbs. Uh, carbs are basically the body's primary source of energy. Uh, and the caloric value for carbs uh, is one gram, it's the same as protein, one gram of uh, carbs is equal to four calories. Um, basically all carbs are sugars. Uh, the most common uh, categories of uh, carbs is they're broken down into monosaturites and oligosaturites. Uh, monosaturites are basically some of the common ones you'd see um, are glucose, which is basically blood sugar, uh, fructose, which is fruit sugar, and uh, galactose, which is milk sugar and your oligosaccharides, uh, which would be sucrose, which is your table sugar, and lactose, which is your milk sugar. Uh, there's more, um, but this is just a common, uh, some of the common ones you'd see. And like I said, it's just kind of an overview to give you some ideas of uh, the what carbs are made up of in terms of the sugars. Uh, so basically, once carbs are uh, digested, they are turned into uh, glucose, and glucose fuels muscle contraction. Um, and glycogen, uh, which is uh, stored in the muscles and liver for future use, uh, this basically allows you to do heavy weight training, and uh, the storage of uh, the glycogen actually makes your muscle size uh, bigger, and uh, it actually stores water as well. Um, yeah, so carbs, another interesting fact about carbs is carbs are protein sparing, which means it doesn't allow the protein to be used for energy, which is what you want. You want the carbs uh, to be used for energy rather than the protein. Uh, just because you want protein to do its job of actually building the muscle and repairing the muscle, you don't want it to be used uh, for burning and actually uh, used for your energy source. So carbs basically have what's called the glycemic index, uh, and this is basically just how quickly the carbs are metabolized. Uh, high glycemic index carbs are basically met metabolized more uh, quicker, I guess you'd say. Uh, you can actually hear terms called simple carbs. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, and then you have your low gly glycemic index carbs, which are basically metabolized slower. Uh, these are things, uh, you know, like your your brown rice versus your white rice, uh, your oatmeal versus your steel cut oats, your potatoes versus your sweet potatoes. So these are just different examples of uh some of the high glycemic carbs versus low glycemic carbs. And uh, the low glycemic carbs, I forgot to mention too, uh, you might hear the word complex carbs. So basically, uh, after uh, an intense training session, your body uh, is depleted of glycogen, so your carbs need to be replaced. Um, so your window there that you're looking at is, uh, I'd recommend about 20 minutes of post-workout time. You, you'd want to get the carbs into you. So the window is much smaller than with, with protein, where you have maybe up to an hour to two hours to get the protein into you. Um, so I would recommend totally of, of having some type of, if you have a protein shake after, include some type of carbs like oats or banana or something high in carbs to get those carbs within you uh, right away. Uh, so you're able to replace those, uh, those carbs that you use during your workout. Um, so basically that you don't want to use the amino acids that are in your body, you'd rather use the carbs. So that's the idea behind that. So next I'm going to jump into fats. So yeah, fats. Uh, fats are actually the most calorie dense uh, micronutrient. Uh, the caloric value for fats is uh, one gram of fat is actually equal to nine calories. Um, fats actually serve three main roles in your body. Uh, they provide a major source of stored energy, which is basically body fat. Uh, they protect against the major organ organs uh, of your body, and they actually uh, act as an insulator to preserve your body temperature. So you, uh, I know that for example, because when I was cutting, uh, I was wondered why I was so freaking cold. And that's the reason why is because I was actually losing body fat. Therefore, my body temperature was escaping because uh, it didn't have the fat there to keep it in. Um, but that's actually just an interesting point. Um, I don't know if a lot of people could relate to that. Um, but definitely when I was cutting, I could definitely relate to that. Um, and yeah, fats are, categor are categorized as uh, saturated, uh, which is your beef, pork, chicken, and egg yolks are just some common examples of your saturated fats. There's also unsaturated fats, which is avocados, olive oils, and peanut butter. Um, just another uh, list of common. There's, t there's tons of them. These are just common ones. And then your polyunsaturated fats, which are uh, basically the ones that they recommend that you uh, have two-thirds of your diet be uh, based around polyunsaturated fats. Uh, and these are your almonds, uh, sunflower oil, and uh, fish. 
So I mean, you'd, you'd find a lot of, uh, sa like salmon for example, would be a good uh, source of polyunsaturated fat. Um, so you want to basically stay within your polyunsaturated fats. You don't want to, uh, you definitely don't want too much uh, saturated fat in your diet. Um, and it can add up quickly. All right, guys, now to move on to the fun part of actually calculating your macros. Uh, so like I said before, I'm going to be using me as an example. So I'm going to walk you through the example of uh, my macros. Um, but yeah, you're going to need to know a couple things. Uh, so basically, your protein calculation uh, that you're going to be using is going to be based on either your body weight or your lean body weight. Uh, basically, what the lean body weight is is just uh, how much... You have to know your body fat percentage in order to do this. Both are just, just as good. Uh, the lean body weight would be more accurate um, because you're taking out how much fat is actually in your body. I'll show you when I run through the example of that. Um, but like I mentioned before, both are uh, acceptable. It's just a lean body weight would be more accurate in terms of actually calculating uh, your protein intake. So you're going to want to know your uh, caloric maintenance. Um, in this situation, my caloric maintenance is 2,500 calories per day. Um, basically, I just figured that out. There's tons of ways you can figure out your, your maintenance. Uh, the one that worked for me, though, was just honestly uh, keeping a journal of how much calories I ate per day uh, for a total of two to three weeks and basically just weighing myself every day uh, and just seeing whether or not I lost uh, lost weight or gained weight. Uh, and basically, I, I kind of wanted to make sure that my calories were uh, at a standstill and I found that at 2,500 calories, I wasn't gaining or wasn't losing any weight. So that was kind of my maintenance there. That's how I figured it out through trial and error of just figuring out how many calories I was actually eating per day and figuring out how many calories I would need in order to not lose, lose a pound or gain a pound. Um, so yeah, I want to set that at 2,500 calories. And uh, in order to bulk, uh, you want to be in a surplus of about 200 to 300 or 200 to 500, sorry, uh, calories per day. And in order to cut, you want to be in the opposite. You want to be in a deficit of 200 to 500 calories per day. So like I said before, using me as an example, I'm going to run you through the whole calculation. Um, but for me, uh, my goal is actually bulking. Uh, you can see by the name of the series, it's the, the clean bulk series. Um, so yeah, I'm going to actually want to bulk. So therefore, in order to determine my uh, caloric intake, I want to take my uh, caloric maintenance. I want to add in the required surplus. And that would be how many calories I would need to eat each day. So 2,500. Uh, calories, as we said uh, up above there, plus I'm going to use a 500 surplus and I want to have a total caloric intake of 3,000 calories. So next I'll actually run you through the calculation of uh, the protein. So before we calculate our protein, uh, we're actually going to need to know your a uh, couple things. Um, we're going to need to know the body weight, uh, your body fat percentage if you're using the lean uh, body, mat, uh, body weight calculation. Um, yeah, so let's go through this. So basically, um, I want to start off with my body weight. My body weight is 178 pounds. Uh, my body fat percentage is 10%. Um, so therefore, if you actually take the 10% and, and multiply it by the 178 pounds, uh, you're going to get 17.8 pounds. That means that the 17.8 pounds of my body weight is fat. Um, that's what that means. So to get the lean body weight, it's actually pretty simple. All you do is you take your body weight and you subtract it by uh, how much uh, fat is actually in your body. So minus the 17.8. So my lean body weight is actually 160.2 pounds. So that's going to be used uh, when I calculate the protein um, based off my multiplier. Um, so yeah, you have my body weight, which is 178 pounds, and my lean body weight, which is 160.2 pounds when you, take out, when you take out the fat. So like I said before, I'm going to be using uh, 1.5 grams as my multiplier. Uh, basically, just I want to optimize my muscle gains, uh, so I figured I'd use a higher multiplier because um, I want to be I want to be training hard and I want to be able to get as much protein into me as I can. Uh, so I'm going to keep my protein high. So I'm going to use 1.5 grams of protein per pound of lean body weight. So like I said before, I'm going to run through uh, both methods. So the first method is the lean body weight method. Uh, like I said before above, I calculated that. That was 160.2 pounds, and I'm going to multiply that by 1.5, and I get 240 grams of protein per day. And then uh, the non-lean body weight method, all I do is just take my body weight, which is 178 pounds, and I multiply it by 1.5, and that's going to give me 267 grams of protein per day. Um, basically, the difference between the two methods, I just figured I'd show that just so you have an idea. Uh, there's actually a variance of 27 grams of protein per day um, if you use the lean body versus non-lean. But like I mentioned before, uh, they both work. Um, you're just going to have to adjust for it. 
Um, it's good to know your body fat, so I totally recommend going in and getting it tested uh, any way that you can. Um, I used uh, a machine to actually test mine um, just because it was convenient. Um, and I got the 10%. So yeah, you can you can use both. Um, but like I mentioned before, your your lean body weight is going to be more accurate. Um, so yeah, there's a variance uh, there. Uh, and in order to get your grams uh, conversion to your calories, uh, you're going to want to divide by, or you're going to want to not divide, so you're going to want to times by four. Because uh, we mentioned before that one gram of protein is equal to four calories. Therefore, all you do is you take your 240 grams of protein for your lean body weight method, and you times that by four. So you're going to want 960 calories uh, out of your total 3,000 calories to be coming from protein. So you're going to want to be hitting uh, 240 grams of protein, and you're going to want 960 calories. And then your non-lean lean body weight method, uh, you take your 267, you times that by four, uh, it's going to give you uh, 1,068 calories, and the variance there is 108. So yeah, there's the, just a comparison of both methods to show the, uh, the protein multiplier. Um, so yeah, that's your protein calculation. Like I said, both are acceptable and both will work. Um, it's just a matter of uh, which one, uh, if, whether or not you know your body fat percentage is really the question. So yeah, next I'm going to run you through uh, the fat calculation. All right, so next you're going to want to determine your fat. Um, your fat is basically um, your daily intake recommendation is anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of your total daily caloric intake. Um, in this situation, I'm going to actually use 20 percent. I just want to be able to consume a little bit more carbs. I've, uh, they're going to be more beneficial for me in order uh, to, do, to build muscle. Uh, they're going to provide me with more energy. Uh, they're going to help with my muscle contractions. Uh, so therefore, I'd rather keep carbs higher uh, than fat. So I'm going to use the lower range here. I'm going to use 20 percent. So like I mentioned before, my uh, my uh, total caloric intake is 3,000 calories, and all I'm going to do is just times that by 20%, and that actually gives me 600 calories per day of fat. Um, so that's how many calories I'm going to be consuming of fat per day. And to get the, uh, the grams conversion, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 600 calories, and like we mentioned before, one gram of fat has nine calories. So we're just going to divide that by nine, and we're going to get approximately uh, 67 grams of uh, fat per day. So I'm going to be consuming 600 calories of fat, which is equal to 67 grams of fat per day. So now we're going to move on to the carbs calculation. So your carbs calculation is basically uh, the remaining calories left after you subtract your protein and fat calories. Um, so we mentioned that the 3,000 calories was um, or how many calories we're consuming each day. We determined that 960 calories are actually coming from protein and 600 calories are coming from fat. So that gives us a remaining total of 1,440 calories to be uh, put into carbs. Um, like I mentioned, that's calories. So to get the uh, gram conversion, uh, we mentioned before that one gram of uh, carbs is actually equal to four calories. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the 1440 and we're going to divide it by four and we're going to get 360 grams of carbs per day. So next I'll give you the breakdown of uh, everything that we calculated and that will be our macronutrient summary. So our macronutrient breakdown uh, or summary is uh, our protein is going to be, like we calculated before, 240 grams per day, um, our fat at 67 grams per day, and our carbs for 360 grams per day. So this would be our uh, daily macro target that we'd want to uh, aim for. Um, you don't need to hit your macros exactly dead on. It's great if you can, um, but really you just want to get it around or as close to uh, those numbers as you can. Um, and these numbers are definitely not set in stone. Um, this is just a calculation. Um, we might have to adjust, uh, you might have to adjust the carbs or increase the cardio. Um, basically the two things that you're going to adjust for the majority of it uh, is just your carbs and your, uh, your cardio. Because I mean, if you're losing too fast or you're, or you're gaining too fast or what have you, um, those are normally the two things that you'd want to adjust um, is your carbs and your cardio. And you'd want to adjust one and give it a little bit in order to figure out uh, if it's if it's working or not. Because if you adjust two, you won't figure, you won't really be able to isolate one uh, variable and determine which one actually worked. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just an idea. Um, this is like I said before, this isn't a set in stone calculation, um, but I mean it's a great start. All right, guys, I'm just uh, heading to the gym. Uh, like I said, today is chest day. Uh, I'm looking forward to this workout. I'm gonna do. Uh, I want to do some voiceovers um, for the workout, so I'll fill you in uh, with the voiceovers, so I'm just going to get to work. Uh, there's one thing that I want to say, though, um, just in terms of motivation. Um, 
I know there's lots of days where people uh, might get unmotivated, they might feel like they don't want to go to the gym, uh, they may just end up getting lazy and not going. Um, everybody needs a rest and everyone needs a recovery, but in terms of what makes a person successful at something is, is when people do it when they don't want to do it. Um, honestly, that's what motivates me to go in there every day if I'm having a down day. I don't even think about it, I just go to the gym. Uh, the more you think about it, the more you're going to try to, your mind's going to try to play tricks on you and make you not want to do it. Uh, so you're basically going to try to talk yourself out of doing it. Um, so I think that's what really separates the people that are that are successful in uh, something is just being able to do it when they're unmotivated, being able to do it when everything's against them and they're still being consistent with it. Uh, so that's kind of one thing that I keep in the back of my head when I'm feeling unmotivated. Uh, not that I'm feeling unmotivated now, I'm actually really, really motivated to, uh, to kill these workouts. Um, but I mean it happens every now and then um, and you can definitely expect it to happen uh, sometime uh, in your workout or your training career. So I just think that like really focusing on why you started and just really doing it when you don't want to do it uh, and being consistent with it. So I just wanted to share that message with you. Um, yeah, so I'll catch you in the gym. Uh, like I said, it's a chest workout and I'll be doing a voiceover and providing a little bit of insight. All right, first exercise. Um, I always start my chest routines with an uh, incline press. Uh, lately, I've been uh, going towards the uh, Smith press. I find that it's uh, I got a stronger mind muscle connection with it. I'm able to squeeze my chest. I'm able to feel it more in my chest. Uh, and after my cut, I'm just kind of uh, trying to build up my strength again. Um, so yeah, I like to really like the Smith machine, and I like starting with an incline. Um, like I said, there I did four sets of eight to twelve reps, uh, and everything felt good for this uh, exercise. The second exercise was a, a dumbbell uh, flat press. I just I always like to include a dumbbell movement in my chest exercises. Uh, just a good variation. I went from a barbell incline to uh, or a Smith incline, sorry, to a dumbbell press. Uh, it's good for your stabilizer muscles. Uh, I find it's a weak point of mine. I'm actually not that great with the dumbbells. Um, and like I said, I'm moving up in strength. I'm trying to get my strength back. I did four sets of 10 to 12, and I really felt the, uh, the contraction at the top there. I tried to hold and really squeeze. All right, for the third exercise, I went with a cable fly. Um, I really like the stretch that you get uh, with the cable flies. Um, you really want to have two different types of movements in your chest routine. You want to have flies and you want to have presses. Um, so yeah, this is how I incorporated the flies with the uh, cable here. I really felt a really good stretch and a really good contraction in my middle chest area. So I was definitely really feeling this one today. All right, for the fourth exercise, I went again with another fly. I like to include two uh, fly type movements and two uh, pressing movements. Uh, so this is just your standard machine uh, pec tech flies, I guess you can say they are. Um, once again, I really liked how the first one felt, so I just uh, repeated it and I went with a machine. Uh, I really tried to squeeze and hold at the uh, end of the rep, as you can notice here in the video. I really like being able to feel the my muscle connection, being able to really get that squeeze that I want on my chest. Um, this one felt awesome. I wasn't concerned about the weight, I was more just concerned about the reps and really getting the volume in. For the final exercises, I went with dips. I actually used to have to do these assisted, but now I'm actually doing them unassisted, so I'm happy about that. I like to end my, uh, my chest exercise with a dip. Um, I just find that it kind of burns uh, my chest out and it really gets me uh, a good chest finisher, I guess you'd say. I really, really felt the burn on this one. Um, it was awesome. Hopefully I'll be able to move up to weighted dip soon. Just got back from my chest workout. I uh, had an amazing uh, workout. Um, I really hit pretty much every part of my chest. Um, all the uh, exercises felt really, really, really good. Um, I had more activation in my chest than in my delts, uh, which I really wanted. Um, the incline Smith machine, uh, like I said, I explained in the video, I really get a good mind muscle connection with that. That's the reason why I enjoy using it. Um, and I like to include two presses and two flies uh, in my chest um, movements. So yeah, and like the dips were really good. They're a body weight exercise. They're great for probably one of the most underrated exercises in terms of chest for chest. Um, but yeah, I also supersetted some push-ups um, at the end uh, with the dips that I didn't film because I just figured it kind of be boring to uh, just get the push-ups uh, in there. But yeah, I actually did those as well. Um, yeah, so that kind of concludes uh, episode three. Um, I really enjoy making these episodes, um, so I'm definitely going to uh, continue. So uh, yeah, uh, episode three is going to be released on uh, Sunday. So it's going to be released on the 28th of April. 
um, which would be not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Uh, and I want to put a scientific uh, twist on uh, my training. I want to start really uh, breaking down the anatomy of the muscle groups, showing you which exercises would work which muscles and what uh, the breakdown of the muscles are. Um, so you really have an understanding. Um, in order to work the muscles, you need to have an understanding of uh, where the muscles are, what their purposes are, and what their functions are. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kind of put a scientific uh, twist on it. So look out for episode three um, on the 28th. And uh, yeah, so I, I really appreciate everyone who tuned in. I uh, hope everyone got something out of this video. Um, I like doing kind of teaching educational style videos. So I figured it'd be kind of good to uh, show you how to do macros and also give you like a nutrition overview. Um, so yeah, I hope, like I said, I hope you get something out of it. Um, also, I do provide online coaching and uh, I actually can make meal plans and I can, uh, so if you're looking to, for meal plans or looking for training or any type of programs, um, I do have those available. Um, you can direct message me just for any more details regarding that. Um, but yeah, I can definitely, if you had macros or I can figure out your macros, uh, and I can make a meal plan to, uh, fit your macros. So if you are interested, uh, direct message me, uh, for those. Um, yeah. And I mean, we'll do like weekly check-ins and we'll make sure that you, uh, we'll set goals for you and we'll make sure that we're, you're able to hit your goals. Um, but yeah, so that kind of concludes, like I said, for episode two, look out for episode three dropping, uh, April 28th. And that's going to be more of a scientific uh, spin on training. Uh, I want to kind of get more scientific with it. Um, I really like knowing about the muscles and uh, I want to be able to show people uh, which exercises uh, work certain muscle groups. So yeah, that's it for, uh, for this. Um, like I said, you can uh, subscribe to my channel, follow the series. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything. I hope everybody has an awesome long weekend. Uh, it's Easter weekend. So make sure that you're, uh, if you use the macro calculation, uh, make sure if you use a flexible dieting, uh, dieting approach, make sure you still hit your macros this weekend. Um, I know it's going to be tough with all that food that's probably in front of your face. Um, but like I said before, uh, nutrition is just as important as training. Uh, so definitely take it seriously uh, and you'll get the results that you want. All right, guys. Peace out.